I'm gonna recycle a bad joke. So what kind of sweaters do pirates wear? Argyle. Okay, back to our daily programming. So before I get into the video, which is derivatives, I don't think I understand them and I don't think anybody really understands them. I kind of want to talk about like where we are with like the YouTube silver kind of sentiment. So I know if someone was saying that, oh, you know, I'm going to buy silver when Silver Futurist, you know, stops making silver videos and so forth. I say, okay, well, you know, Stella Concepts stopped making videos, so maybe you should have bought then. Or Da Vinci hasn't made, Da Vinci hasn't been around for six months, right? And like, Drudder is not making videos, right? So all of the original silver channels who I watched before I started making this channel, I think they're all gone. I'm trying, I'm trying to, like, Trader G, you know, um... Well, actually, um, I think the, the, Wiki, the Weekly Telegram has, has, a, has a new channel, but he used to make sort of videos and, you know, so, and of course, you know, more than that, but basically, am I like the, one of the last holds out, holdouts? I mean, there's a few others, but I mean, the channels that I had found first, you know, so is, is, are the people saying that, you know, because I'm the last holdout? Or that was a very arbitrary thing they said because they could have said the same thing. Hey, when DaVinci stops making silver videos, well... He stopped making videos six months ago, so that means we've, we've hit the floor in the last six months. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. So, spe speaking of Drudder, I remember when I did a video when Silver was about 30, and I did a video, and I was saying, you know, this is not good how um, Eric Sprott is making the rounds, and that's usually a bad sign. And, of course, Silver fell from 30 to where it is, and Drudder did a video where he was kind of like um, making fun of me. And I think it was... It was within bounds because he was only making fun of my, like, um, my predictions, my analysis, and my chickens, which are actually not a, my, my chickens aren't sacred cows, are sacred chickens. So people, I've got like a make fun of chicken, um, indicator, right? The more my chickens are made fun of, the more silver falls, all right? So people, I guess if, 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 if I say things like, you know, um, silver, you know, I'm not, seeing it go up in the near future, I'll get people say, oh yeah, you're chickens, you're chicken man. Well, that's actually an indicator. So I call it the, the, the chicken contrarian indicator. So Drudder, one thing about Drudder that um, actually impressed me was, um, you know, people called people names. So someone was calling him a name and he said, you know, someone said I'm narcissistic, but I guess, you know, everybody has to have some love for themselves you know, at all. I mean, you got, you got to love yourself a little bit. And he said, yeah, you know, so, and I was like, oh, that impressed me because instead of him being defensive and saying, I'm not, not, he goes, yeah, I guess, I guess maybe I am. That, that's the sign of someone who probably isn't because he didn't get all defensive. He said, yeah, maybe I'm a little narcissistic, but I mean, who isn't? And I was like, that was like, I, I think that was the most impressive thing I've ever heard, heard Drudder say. So going back to these derivatives, right? So Josh did a video about derivatives and he was showing charts and graphs. And um, so I'm kind of confused in general because apparently derivatives are the biggest thing, like monetary wise, that have ever existed in the human history, like trillions and trillions of dollars. Like these derivatives are many times more trillions by a huge scale than the entire world's GDP, these derivatives, right? So these derivatives out there, which I, it's really um, like this, abstract, confusing thing. I don't think anybody, I think that most people in the entire world don't spend any time thinking about derivatives. They might have heard about them once when we had a financial crisis. But these derivative, derivative things, right, are, are they really a concern of ours or are they going to create some kind of black swan thing in the future? I was reading some comments in his channel and um, there are some good comments saying that, you know, um, if, if, they're, if, if they're doing QE and they're creating money and the money goes from these derivatives, then it, it's like it didn't exist or something, right? It's like we, we, we will not feel the impact of that. If they're, if they're doing QE to support these derivatives from our perspective, then we, we won't feel the impact of that money being created. Because I know, um, technically speaking, like they don't like print money. They create an accounting entry where there's the expectation of that money being paid back. It's, it's, it's debt. But if QE, if they loan to themselves and if they create a loan for themselves and then throw that money out there, right? Apparently that money has to come back sometime. 
And I'm, I'm kind of saying this simplistically because I want people who have studied this more than me to say something. And when I say study, I don't mean like hear someone do a video saying, oh, blah, 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 alarm, 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 you know, we're going to cry wolf, we're going to cry wolf. I know people who've actually like looked at the hardcore uh, numbers and data information who've tried to actually understand, who've tried to understand this. Because, I mean, is this derivatives going to be a non-issue for most of, most of us? Or at some time, is there going to be a black swan event and we're all going to be shocked? Like in 2008, there was a shock. But this, this crisis in 2008, I know a lot of people who weren't even aware of this crisis. Like this yoga teacher friend I have. Like I was talking to her about the 2008 crisis. She goes, she goes what crisis? Because from her perspective, right, she, you know, she teaches yoga and, you know, she operates, you know, on a, I guess mostly on a cash basis. You know, she has a humble life. And for her, you know, this entire crisis didn't impact her one bit. I mean, it didn't impact her anything in her life that she was aware of. So I'm wondering if there will be a crisis where everybody feels it. I know Bernanke said recently that the crisis um, could have been worse than the Great Depression. And that, so what I'm thinking is that the crisis is going to be worse than the Great Depression. They just pushed it down the road. Or maybe they're going to do it in a way where it might not feel as bad as Great Depression. But pushing down the road, I mean, this this world economy is so big and these derivatives are so big and this stuff is so big that as, as far as magnitude of scale is, I mean, the Great Depression lasts like a whole generation, right? So can they push stuff off for a whole generation? Or maybe... It's just that, you know, we're just reading articles about this stuff and we're not actually in there in the bank of international settlements and we really don't know the full story. And the people in the bank of international settlements, maybe they, they don't think that we really need to know the full story. So it's just, this is a, like a very kind of confusing thing. And it's like, I think the public's memory is the people who remember the crisis have like almost forgot about it. And... Is there a crisis coming we're not going to expect? I mean, I I, the, I I know some people who are like, you know, kind of like uh, in person who are like hot shot, like stockbrokers on Wall Street. I know I've got friends on YouTube, but I haven't met them in person. And some of them I haven't, I haven't, I haven't even seen. But I've got some friends in person where, you know, I'm talking to them. They say, hey, you know, uh, yeah, Joe, we, doom could happen anytime, you know, but we're, we'll just have to change our strategy. They're like, you know. What's work? What's what's happening right now is working well for us, and you know we'll keep doing what we're doing. But if something else comes along, we'll have to adapt. And they're saying, yeah, doom can strike at any moment. We know that. You know we're not we don't have our heads in the sand. We know that stuff can there can be a crash at any time. But you know we've been doing this for a long time, and we're we've got to be ready for it. So that, that that sounded sort of reassuring. But from what I've studied, is like every generation you have like a wipeout event, like the Great Depression or even 19 the, the, the late 80s, the stock crash of the late 80s, is a lot of people were stuck in positions and they couldn't get out of them. So we have a lot of things online where people are doing things, and is there is a pot does a possibility exist? Someone will get stuck in the trade and they can't get out. I know that stuff gaps up overnight and people might not be able to participate. Um, so I'm kind of throwing a big thing out there because I'm not saying there's doom. I'm just saying is that it appears the way that markets work is like every generation stuff happens. And the stuff happens so that even the people who think they're best prepared might not be able to handle it. So these are, this is kind of just um, my random musing, um, random musing thoughts that maybe are amusing. So thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.